I used to ask myself a lot of questions. Scott, you're at X-Con. How are you an Avenger? That doesn't make sense. But everywhere I go, people tell me the same thing. Thank you, Spider-Man. People still need help, Dad. That's why we made this. It's like a satellite for deep space, but Quana. Wait, wait a minute. You're sending a signal down to the quantum realm. Turn it off. Now! The Ant family conducts an experiment that sends a beacon into the quantum realm. Some unseen force receives the signal and sucks the family into a secret dimension where they must face off against a mysterious new villain. Hey everyone, welcome back to Clubhouse Movies Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Rubalcaba, joined once again by Mr. Abel Panetta. Today we'll be reviewing Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania, directed by Peyton Reed. What in tarnation is that thing? It's got baby arms and baby legs. <laughs> and baby ass. Yeah. <laughs> I was really hoping you would jump in with that. <laughs> oh, man. It's not a you, spoiler I, if you know the comics. Well, it's in the trailer, too. So yeah, well, at least not, not the baby ass. It's it's <laughs> Modoc. <laughs> Modoc. You're going to see him in all his glory. <laughs> Well, we'll get we'll get to it, but let, let, get let, okay. So this movie is getting a little bit of a flack in the uh, in the review community. I liked it better than a lot of the other movies that have come out recently. It was better than Love and Thunder. Yeah, much 100%. better than Love and Thunder. Way better than whatever the heck Eternals was. Dude, I forgot Eternals existed. Every time you mention it, I forget that was a movie. Well, there have been a lot of duds in the yeah. Marvel universe, and even Shang Chi was. Even though I ended up really liking it. When I watch it, I actually rewatched it right before I saw this movie. Just you know, just for the hell of it, along with all the other Ant Man movies. But uh, that movie, I thought I liked it a lot. After watching this one, I'm like, not not as much. By the way, did you notice that the Ten Rings seem to be powering uh, Chronopolis? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's in, uh, that's definitely in the trailer too. So yeah, it's there. Uh, and it's not overtly spoken, but it does yeah. appear to be the uh, the illusions there. But uh, I liked it. I enjoyed it. I, yeah, uh, I, li- I liked it better than a lot of things um, yeah. that have come out this year. And if anything, I was <laughs> saying it kind of reminded me of like a Scooby-Doo mystery because uh, <laughs> <Scooby-Doo>. <laughs> because it, it, I refer to it as the Ant Family now. It's Ant yeah, Man uh, and the Wasp, but it's almost like the Ant Family. Now. I was trying to hold in my laugh when you said Ant Family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, how the, the, the that's true. They I was all, writing at the gang. They all the have suits. Yeah. Scooby van. <laughs> they had a van, yeah, at least in the previous two movies. <laughs> they did. Yeah, they did. It <laughs> saved the world. It did save the world in the second one. Uh, maybe some of the okay. And, and I was I, I, I was gonna say even in uh, Avengers Endgame, it saved the world. Yeah, <laughs> there <laughs> saved by Mickey Mouse <laughs> in a in a, in a rare uh, live performance. <laughs> 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 He's a baby. <laughs> Speaking of baby. Uh, and in uh, Scott Lang ra- writes a freaking book. <laughs> Will I ever uh, not be a baby again? <laughs> Dude, that was funny. Yeah, uh, I, I have two theories about critics. Is maybe they don't watch the whole movie. I think they just watch like the first like twenty yeah. minutes because the first or they jump cut. Yeah, they, they they fast forward through their screeners or whatever. But I feel like. Uh, the first act of this movie, or not even the first act, but like the what kicks off the story, yeah, happens at breakneck pace. Yeah, this this whole movie happens at a pretty good clip, and then it just stays consistent until the end, where you're just like, oh god, oh god. It's oh like god. two prologues in the movie. Yes, uh, and it happens pretty quick. I don't even think there was an actual title card at the beginning of the movie. No, that there I wasn't. About it it, it just, happens at the end. Yeah, it just, it just roundhouse kicks and keeps going. Yeah. And doesn't stop. Yeah. So if you plan on arriving after the trailers, do not. Please arrive right right at the last one. Uh, and maybe there's some wonky CG just because so much was happening in this movie. Yeah. There, I I didn't see it. There, but okay. I, I've heard. I just kind of felt a little bit of like brr, a little bit of brr, a little mm-hmm. blur, blurriness, a little bit of oh. PlayStation Two going on yeah. in there. It was, it was, there was a whole lot happening. Everyone that could ever exist was on the screen at once. Uh. Okay. So. This movie starts with the first prologue, mm-hmm. which is uh, we don't know much about uh, Michelle Pfeiffer's uh, 
stint, 30 year stint, Janet Van Dyne's 30 year stint yeah. in the quantum realm. But when they rescued her, there was a city in the background. Yeah. They didn't mention, which nobody thought to look like, hey, there's a freaking city over there. <laughs> Should we like visit it? <laughs> like, no, no, no. Just save her. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, we're also talking about like, like time travel and Star Trek rules kind of seem to work the same way for some reason, which is uh, space. They keep assuming yeah. space is a straight line. Yeah. The quantum realm can't possibly be a straight line either. No. Like every every molecule of the quantum has realm. its own version of space and time. Exactly. So the thing that they keep running into each other back and forth yeah. seems uh, infinitesimal. Ooh, fancy <laughs> words. Yeah. That's the button we're looking like for. On, like on Star Trek, like somehow they just keep on finding people. Yeah. Like, oh, I remember you. Like, <laughs> it's like, like uh-huh. what? no, it's infinitesimally <laughs> large. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> space is like a river. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about busting out the uh, the old uh, plot hole device, <laughs> old plot. Uh, but time travel wasn't. Quite they wiped pretty well here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was. A, it was a <laughs> Who thought it'd be a good idea to have bears sell toilet paper? <laughs> You know, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Like, how are they going to get it? That's like that's like oatmeal in a shag carpet yeah. situation going on right? there. <laughs> or like oatmeal and a Quaker. And a Quaker, yeah. I just be like, who's this weirdo selling oatmeal? Yeah. It's like, why? <laughs> didn't he we- looks trustworthy. I like his hat. Like, didn't Wednesday just kill him? Yeah. <laughs> ah, she's, she's now a Thursday. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> killing, killing all those Quakers. But anyway, oh, man. As we alluded to, uh, uh, Janet Van Dyne, played by Michelle Pfeiffer, is yeah. stuck. They, they flash back to her being stuck, having mm-hmm. a farm, a bugalo farm, yeah. on the quantum realm with these like snail snail trail horses. I'm going to say, yeah, right. She's not on the Oregon Trail. She's on the snail trail. Yeah, weird, uh, weird uh, tardigrade amoeba horse things. Yeah, um, in a farm. I don't know where she got her farm. I guess I guess she there is a city, but at this point, it was in the Wild West. And then, yeah, then yeah. Kang shows up. Well, not Kang. She gets attacked by some sort of wild creature. Yeah, these first. They look like Avatar. Like, like they look wolves. Like, yes, they like those Avatar monsters. But the thing is, these guys can like disappear when you attack them or morph into two versions of themselves. So there's a little bit now that I've thought about that mm-hmm. because the the morphing into multiple variants happened because they were near Kang's machine. So oh, so I'm actually going to call his machine a TARDIS. Even though it didn't travel through space, yeah, but it could have. It could have. So <laughs> I wore my mm-hmm. Doctor Who shirt. There you go. <laughs> because uh, you know, a time machine goes back and forth through time. Yeah, a machine that can go back and forth through matter is a uh, oscillation overthruster. That makes sense. Yes, totally. It, and it really mach- does. And a machine that does everything is a TARDIS, which travels through time and relative dimension inside space. Ooh. Sorry, being being nerdy today. <laughs> so so so. <coughs> I'm kidding. I like this stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> so so Kang, uh, as we last seen in Loki, yeah. uh, the He Who Remains said that that there uh, there will be variants now, variants afoot. Yeah. Like if you kill me, and Loki promptly killed him. Yeah. So he appeared. Uh, he crash landed in the middle of the quantum realm on. Uh, I was say Selena Kyle <laughs> on Janet Van Dyne's uh, uh, farm. On her farm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he killed the he killed the amoeba wolf yeah. thing, which. Now I see a plot hole here. Yeah, because obviously he had crashed, right? And she's getting attacked by these things. And all of a sudden he rescues her by shooting her. It's like if you're on this empty farm, how did you not hear that crash? It was right there. I think he heard the crash. I think she heard the crash first because. Uh, oh, right. Yeah, that's yeah, what that's sorry. what brought her out. And then I think the, and I think I, okay, this is what I think happened because it did happen really fast. Yeah, yeah, it was. I think the 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 TARDIS crashed. Yeah. And then the wolf thing got spooked and went after Michelle Pfeiffer. Mm-hmm. And then Kang, sh- right before Kang shot it, since uh, Kang's TARDIS was destroyed, it was creating multiple universes, multiple variants. That's true. And that's why the wolf thing was was turning into multiple creatures. Oh. And it wasn't until Kang I interfered like that he was able to stop it. I, and, and I'll then, buy that for a dollar. Yeah. I need that button. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> Shut up and take my uh, money. We have but, the next best thing right there. I know, right? Uh, and uh, and then Kang says, like, I can get you out of here or something yeah. like that. We just have to, like, dream. In his weird voice, I can get you out of here. Okay. And I'm going to start with my first kind of gripe, not necessarily with this movie, but with, yeah. with uh, this phase. I don't know if I like Jonathan Majors as King. He's you know, all right. He has the furiosity. He does. I like it. him as an actor i just yeah there was like for me there was a disconnect because it felt like he just wasn't even though he was in it he was pretty he, vicious in it i just couldn't he doesn't have the gravitas 
That's it. I feel like if we had an Idris Elba. Dude, Idris Elba would have sold this thing. Idris Elba. And Nicolas Cage. <laughs> well, Nick Cage. Throw. Nick Cage is good in like all movies. <laughs> yeah, he is. Um, but I think I think Thanos was played by Josh Brolin. He had that like if, that, if, that, that booming voice. Yeah, and if they had Josh Brolin doing it, or this is my this might be a stretch. If they had Pedro Pascal in his I'm tired voice. of Pedro Pascal. Listen, this guy's everywhere. I'm tired of Pedro Pascal. <laughs> Long live Pedro or even Oscar Isaac. I don't know. No, Oscar Isaac's voice doesn't lend to this, but you know, Oscar can, Isaac was already apocalypse. Yeah, I know he was already in there, but no, I'm just saying like his voice. He's like, he's like, I can bring you in cold. Or I can bring you in warm. <laughs> like that, you know, that, that yeah, nasal, maybe. it's like a, like a wetness to but, it, but I'm going, I'm, I'm going with English. Idris Elba. That that would be that would have been that would be badass. Good. I give that one the English. You didn't mention that 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 right there. Yeah, bring give him some elegance. You know, yeah, man, because uh, that's that's a thing. King had this air about him as he walked. That was well elegance, man. Yeah. So, but I mean, I, I do like Jonathan Majors. I do like the yeah. the furiosity. But I think as as time goes on, the um, the insanity that this character brings. Yeah. I don't know. He was angry. He was just angry. He's an angry fella. Yeah, especially since I've seen the, a lot of the Creed three trailers like before this one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like King's gonna go fight Michael B. Jordan before he goes. They're to like, Conquer what's happening? Universe. They're like Black Panther and King are fighting each other. <sighs> yeah. yeah, they are. <laughs> not not Black Panther, but uh, well, Killjoy or don't Killjoy. Kill <laughs> Killmonger. Killmonger. Killjoy. Killjoy. I mean, he was for depending no, depending that, who sees him. That was Eternals. <laughs> well, that's that, yeah, that entire movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but uh. No, well, the thing is that could still exist because now we are exposed to the multiverse. You know, there's a multiverse. Yeah, uh, but anyway, uh, then we get to the the second prologue, which right is probably first part act one, but it is his own scene. Yeah, where uh, Scott Lang played uh, beautifully by uh, Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd is uh, this guy. Man. He wrote a book and he's narrating how great his life is, which reminds me a lot of Spider Man. Yeah, like hey, I'm Spider Man, and <laughs> being a Spider Man is great. Do I miss the action? Sometimes. Will I be there when the Avengers need me? Absolutely. I'd never turn my back on them. But right now, the only job I want is being a dad. I love you, Cassie. Thanks for being my hero. And I'm sorry I missed some birthdays. And for the rest of you kids out there, word of advice. Look out for the little guy. But here's like, hey, I'm Ant Man. Being uh, Ant Man is great. Yeah, like in the trailer, yeah. like I love you, Spider Man. He's like, I love you too. But he's got like this 1980s sitcom walk about him. <laughs> he's walking on the yeah. The they're it's just super. They're even playing the Welcome Back Carter theme. Welcome yeah. back, <laughs> welcome back, welcome. <laughs> it feels like I'm watching Three's Company. Yeah. So so he's really happy. Uh, except now his uh, daughter and I did t- kind of start writing that in the synopsis because it didn't really fit in, but like his daughter seems to be a malcontent now, yeah. Because uh, she was protesting and got arrested and shrunk a police car, yeah. Uh, which she just promptly handed it back to him. By the way, do the laws of physics and mass they, they seem to be really nilly nilly, nilly because that so, should should have been a three thousand dollars should have just gone through the desk, yeah. Well, because that's the thing, right? Like not to get even. Ner- to get nerdy, I was going to say not to get nerdy, but to get nerdy. So the whole premise behind Ant-Man's whole deal, and this was explained in the first movie, is he retains his mass even when he shrinks so that when he shrinks, he is still heavy with the punches, but obviously this didn't apply to the He has to double car. jump. Yeah, he double <laughs> jumps. As, as, as we jump as, and press, jump, jump and press, press. <laughs> jump and press. <laughs> Didn't you see that? I couldn't see you. You're, you were small. Yeah. Wait, wait. Uh, that, uh, that plays a lot into this yeah, movie, so, too. Sorry. Uh, so, yeah, his daughter has a suit now. Uh, we don't yeah. really know when, but apparently just because she's been hanging out with Michael Douglas a lot. <laughs> Hank Pym. Yeah, the, the only guy. Man. The only guy who is introduced with his character in his name. Yeah. Every freaking movie. We get it. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, and uh, he wrote a book, and then his daughter, he, the bust him out of jail. And then they, okay, then this, this literally just happens. He's still with um, Hope, Hope Van Hope Dyne. Hope Van Dyne, yeah. And uh, they were all having dinner with yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer. And then, and then they just briefly touched on, how can you still don't tell us anything about the quantum realm? He's like, well, I don't want to talk about the quantum mm-hmm. realm just yet. If only they did, by the way, they would have saved everyone a lot of trouble. Yeah. All everyone, they did say, everyone's like, all right, then. Oh, all, man. All, I guess she didn't want to admit that like her and Bill Murray had a thing. Yeah, Bill freaking Murray. Bill Murray's in this movie. Okay, it's uncancelable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he also had the best cameo of all time in... Um, 
What was the zombie movie with Woody Harrelson? Oh, oh Zombie Land. Zombie Land. Yeah, Best was, cameo ever in Zombie. That was crazy when he came on screen. Do you have any regrets? Oh, maybe Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> he died. It was great. Uh, Which, by the way, he was a good Garfield. It just wasn't. He was. A, it just wasn't a good movie. Yeah, I, wa- I watch it for the Bill Murray, and they made a second one. But anyway, <laughs> uh, okay. So they, 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 she doesn't. She doesn't want to talk, uh, hope. Not hope. Uh, the, the Janet doesn't want to talk about the Quantum Room. But honestly, yeah. I should say is he is super villain in the Quantum Room. Don't go unless you're yeah. ready to fight a super villain. Yeah. Noted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Noted. That's all you had to say. I would be like not going there anymore. And then like in this world of Thanos and snapping like, well, yeah, okay. A super villain lives in the quantum realm. That <laughs> makes sense. It does. It's a world within a world within a world. Uh, I guess she, she's the one that I'm, oh, well, we'll talk about. It. Yeah. Uh, uh, so so since no, since no one's talking about the quantum realm, Hank and uh, the Insert daughter plot device. Yeah, Hank and the daughter <laughs> an actual device. Yeah, have a back room where they made a beacon into the quantum realm. <laughs> They're like this thing is like a two way radio and you're into like, the quantum realm. As soon as they said it, I'm like, oh, of course it is. <laughs> and then they they just turn it on and it's like, wait, that's a beacon in the quantum realm. It's the daughter's yeah. name. Uh, Cassie Lang, yeah. <laughs> dude, you don't want to go call in the quantum room. Why? Because someone might call back. You yeah. know, like they're like, like turn it off, turn it off, and then all of a sudden, like it creates a singularity. <laughs> and they get sucked into the quantum yeah. room, and the movie begins. And the, yeah, oh, the big, <laughs> they they get sucked into the quantum room with their ants. Yes, with their ants. I remember that. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so they're split into two groups. Yeah. Uh, one of the group is the uh, Scott and his daughter. Scott and his daughter, and then Hope it is the two families. Yeah. So it's the Pym and the Lang family. The, I didn't even realize that. You know. Yeah. That? So Scott and his daughter uh, get stuck with the with a tribe of outsiders. Well, you could say they're stuck between a Pym and a Lang. <laughs> <laughs> who? Uh, who <laughs> so dumb. One, 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 okay. So one creature he he, he oozes translation um, a translation Dude, matrix. <laughs> who loves holes? Who was who voiced that guy? Was it the guy who played a freaking uh? Was it what's his face? Something Eisner. He's always in these damn things. Yeah, I don't know. Who? <laughs> yeah, he a, wants holes. Yeah, he wants <laughs> holes, and he and he made he yeah. made Scott count how many holes like, he had. Yeah, yeah so like, okay. So yeah. yeah, so they have to go through this whole thing where you know, obviously they're in another realm where no one speaks English. Oh, oh. By the way, uh, this reminded me a lot of uh, Star Wars. Yes, very Star Wars, very Flash Gordony. But this yeah. was like when they landed in the Ewoks land. It was great. <laughs> it was like it was a very like it was entertaining. Very so, soap, a uh, very space opera. Yeah, yeah, space opera. Like this whole like it was it was fun. So they land in this place. Obviously, they don't speak the language, and Scott's getting all held up by all the by the gang of these people. And he sees his daughter Cassie, and she's like, "Just drink it, Dad. Just drink the juice. Drink the goo. The goo. Drink, drink the, the goo. goo. My goo. No one wants to drink any goo. And she's got like goo on her face. Yeah, she, <laughs> she looks like she's been eating Nickelodeon gacker. Like, yeah, that's gross. Oh, she got oozed. Yeah, she got so, oozed by Ivan Ooze. Yeah, God, that's a throwback. I know. And uh, then, then he gets interviewed or interrogated by a, by a mind reading guy, who I'm pretty sure is a comedian somewhere. I don't know. Anyway, cut fast forward. Um, he oh, mind reading guy was a uh, Quaz, 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 Quaz. I don't know. I, don't know. I can't pronounce these names. Uh, so he drinks the ooze, and all of a sudden, everybody comes into English. They're like, "Oh, I can understand you guys." And the guy who spits out the ooze, he's like. How many holes do you have? He has an obsession with holes. Yeah. Ooh, seven. It was funny. There was <laughs> like, a running joke in the movie, and it was delivered well. Yeah. Uh, and then Scott t- took time to count those holes. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven. <laughs> On screen. Uh, and then, <laughs> uh, so so they're they're with these with these guys, and there's a leader. Uh, <laughs> this leader avatar woman or leader. Uh, what's her name? Uh, I don't know. She looked like one of the name Namor. more Namor. Yeah, she Na- looked like Na- one of the name one of the name more Yeah, there we go. We're gonna call her name or it Namora. No, it was her name. <laughs> actually, it was it was I'm, I'm close. She's it was Gentora. Gent. Wow, really? Yeah, <laughs> Gent- <laughs> What are the odds? there was a there was probably a uh, oh, there was man. probably a, a pitch room or something. What do we call this girl? She reminds me of the name more girl. We'll call her Gentora. Gent- <laughs> Because she's a ch- uh, yeah. Uh. So, and, you know, there, there's her, and then there's, uh, like we said, the holes, holes guy. Yeah. And there was also a uh, cannon face guy. Yeah. 
He looked like a Jolly Rancher that could shoot you. And then uh, their buildings are, are, are big marshmallow creatures. They really are. They, they, like they that they, they're alive. He's like Scott's like, wait, your buildings are alive. He's like, and then, then Holes guy's like, wait, are yours dead? Yours are dead. <laughs> like not oh. or aren't yours, but it goes immediately dark. and You're like, oh no, <laughs> our buildings are dead. <laughs> yeah, well, I had a bit of an existential crisis. But then again, <laughs> I think a lot of the buildings are dead. In uh, that was a bit of a stretch of a joke because yeah. then the rest of the Chronopolis yeah uh, buildings look pretty dead to me too. Yeah, they're pretty dead. <laughs> These look like regular buildings. <laughs> dead to me. You know what else they remind me of a little bit? Uh, Tron. 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 There we go. Tron Legacy. Yeah, there we go. Do you remember they went to like I the? I do. They, remember uh. <laughs> Why am I, I, I this 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 bo- the, the discus this, ladies this boogaloo ranger <laughs> boogaloo ranger do you remember they went to the club and talked to like, that, like that guy. and they're mixing okay. the and the girls have like discus heads yeah like, doosh, 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 doosh. they're talking to Daft Punk dude in the club the, dude, the, that. no joke man this <laughs> you brought me here is da- Disneyland DCA Disney California Adventure it used to have a thing called Electronica and it was based on Tron Tronic and it was legit a club every single night of the week in their Hollywood area and it was fantastic. They had like the chicks and DJ from the actual movie mixing live. It was ridiculous. Did you ever go to the one in Florida where there was like an alien and intro- alien encounter or whatever where like it gets loose? No. Yeah, it was actually supposed to be. I mean, I did go there, but no, I, I, it, it was, was after po- my time. It was supposed to be alien versus predator alien, like the like the the Sigourney well, Weaver alien. They like get the at to Disney it. or Universal? At Disney. Wow. Well, they couldn't get the rights to it, but it's funny because now now they own it. So. Yeah, no, they own it like <laughs> eventually. Yeah. Anyway, uh, getting back at you. What the hell was I saying? Okay, okay. So they they go to the city, the the, yeah. the, the Pym family, which is uh, Hope, uh, Hope, Hope and Janet, and Hank. Yeah. Yeah, they they somehow get a uh, oh they how did they get there? They just walk there, I guess. Oh no! So so they didn't like, get a they had this yet. they had this scene where um, oh they ran to more yeah to more people from this this realm yeah um, Janet obviously having an extended stay here meets this guy who tries to take her head off and he takes his arm off he regrows it and they hug each other and everyone's confused <laughs> and like, oh, and like oh and then all of a sudden he's like yeah we got you guys and. <laughs> Hands them all perfectly fitting clothes and uh, these yeah Road these War, Star Road Wars Warrior cruisers clothes. yeah <laughs> from Tatooine yeah and they take off like, well, yeah. Yeah. they take off in an Avatar creature that's what I'm saying yeah and uh, they, they they take off in that one they go to the city where they yeah. meet Krylar I think his name was Krylar <laughs> yeah Krylar Kry- Lord Krylar played by Bill freaking Murray dude when he showed up I kept you know the thing is I kept forgetting Bill Murray was in this movie I knew he was in it. But I kept forgetting that he was in it. Every time he showed up, I was just like, okay. Yeah. So she wants to talk to Krylar, who's like this big like mob boss now. Yeah. And uh, it's Lord Krylar to you, and he's looking for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who's looking for you? <laughs> we all know he. They cut to Scott, and they're like, yeah, we're, we're, here, with, uh, we're here with Janet. Janet, he'll be looking for Janet. <laughs> you know, a lot of that. Uh, and uh, <laughs> this is the best part where. Bill Murray's like, yeah, there. Someone's looking for Hank. What kind yeah. of person? Not quite a person. More like a mechanical <laughs> device uh, yeah. made only for killing. Oh <laughs> no! Mechanical organic device <laughs> only for killing. Yeah, it's like <laughs> Modoc. Modoc. It's an acronym. Yes. Uh, and then they they manage. <laughs> so I know. The, uh, <laughs> what's her name? Uh, Hope. Hope managed to like kung fu her way out, and they steal Bill yeah. Murray's. Uh, uh, his ship, his ship which, yeah. which has a weird like gooey like interface to gonna fly say, man just gonna say it kind of perverse it's got, right? it's got it's got flesh like controls <laughs> it's like perverse right it's gross it is it's really gross i don't know it's like oh god <laughs> yeah and i don't know i don't know who was thinking about that one but yeah <laughs> no thanks yeah Whoever came up with that that was gross yeah some weird tentacle stuff going on there. yeah no thanks <laughs> <Probably Jose. laughs> i don't say Oh boy! Oh yikes! <laughs> what happened <laughs> to that guy? <laughs> no idea. I think he's in the basement somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. Uh, so then Modok finds, which is this giant head wearing yeah. a mask, and it's got little tiny arms and legs, and it just like sits on like a metal throne and just flying yeah. around. <laughs> it's a it's it's flying an armchair. Yeah, and it, and it like kills a bunch of people, and then like it's like Scott, like I found you, yeah. like aha, you've been like a brother to me, and yeah, now and he's like, like how do you know me? It's like full circle, and the thing opens, and he's like oh, you cross who got sucked into the quantum realm in the first movie. Yeah, and the only reason he's he sees got, him is because he takes his mask off, 
And he's this giant head with baby arms and baby Yeah, legs. giant baby head, baby arms. It looks so stupid. It looks like someone stretched the aspect ratio on a movie that was four by three. I was like, I really want this to be 16 by nine. And it looked horrible. <laughs> yeah, and they even show a scene where like he's being built. Yeah. And he and, and then Kang just finds him and then like just puts him together. Yeah. And then he sees a little butt like yeah. hanging down. A little baby butt. <laughs> He's really got a baby butt. So he's like a big potato head with a little baby baby butt and like <laughs> arms and legs sticking out of him. <laughs> so unnecessary. It's pretty funny. But anyway, he's he's after them, and then uh, he actually captures them and brings them to Kang. Yeah. And uh, and then the other team like they escape, and we learn like the backstory. Yeah. He's like, I was a genius, <laughs> and I gave uh, pretty much. He helped Kang build all of his fortress. Yes. Uh. Oh yeah, he did help. But yeah, yeah. Uh, Stoll did. Yeah. Yeah. Stoll. Even though Stoll doesn't, you know, King doesn't. Cross, sorry, Cross in this. Stoll's the actor. Corey Stoll is the actor. It's, it's Quantum Verse. Come on. Yeah, there you go. He You're, exists in one name or another. Still waiting to see Bruce Campbell show up again. He's got to show up. <laughs> but anyway, he's Pizza Papa. Pizza Papa, when he's to get paid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah. Uh, what the hell was I saying? Okay. 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 So now, now, now Janet's telling the story of what happened back then yeah. where they were able to fix it. The, the eye of the TARDIS is eye of the TARDIS. Yeah. yeah, that was good. That was good. No, it's, it I, I literally got, is the eye. Of I got I got to use my star and my, my sci-fi references was, when I can. That was good. That was good. They, so his ship has been damaged, po- yeah. probably sabotaged. Yes, um, probably. And, and much like the TARDIS of Doctor Who, this uh, TARDIS is also psychically connected to uh, Kang. Yeah. So after years and uh, all kinds of work to trying to fix the eye of the TARDIS, they find it's a battery power. It's, a, it's yeah. the thing that p- powers this uh, thing. Uh, they finally fix it. They connect to the ship, and then Janet touches it yeah. and sees that this guy, in fact, is a complete asshole. Yeah. <laughs> He's a conqueror. He's a conqueror. King the conqueror, and he's destroyed entire worlds. And uh, he's been exiled. And then yeah. he's like, King's like, what did you see? And I just realized. Yeah. I think this is how Janet gained her psychic ability. Remember, because she's in when she enters our realm, she. Oh has, yeah. Yeah, she has this ability to read minds. Yeah, actually, oh, you're right. Yeah, she became a mutant. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Dun, 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 which, dun, which, dun, which they don't touch on anymore at all. By the like, way, what happened to X Men ninety seven? It's supposedly uh, heading in the right direction. Okay, <laughs> last I saw, <laughs> what's the right direction? <laughs> nice <laughs> thumbs up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, so so she managed to put one of the Ant Man uh, enlarging. Uh, she put like freaking three of them, three, three, three four of them, three Ant Man enlarging things yeah. and blew the whole thing up. Yeah. So it's like it's like the heart of the city now. Yeah. But it's unusable in his TARDIS. And uh, somehow she is she shrinks and disappears. Yeah, so she is since on the run from King. From King, uh, now since Scott uh, has the the Ant Man suit and all the what do we call these things widgets? <laughs> the Ant Man <laughs> widgets. Let's call them widgets. Yeah, yeah. the Ant Man widgets. The big bit, widget, little widget. It makes you big and small. And he's like, "You're a thief. You need to like steal my." Yeah. This also reminds me of uh, Lord of the Rings a little bit. <laughs> You're a thief. You, yeah. need to, you need to get me the ring. Which, by the way, this thing was made of rings a lot too. The uh, yeah. guitar is very ringy. The whole thing. Ooh, <laughs> got him. Uh, and then uh, he's like, "I won't do this for you. You're evil." And then he threatens to like kill like his daughter. Yeah. He's like, he starts torturing. He's like, he's like "Fine, I'll do it." Yeah. He's like, "I'll kill your daughter." Yes, kill your dog and stuff. And stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's, what, that's his whole thing. Yeah, it's like, come on, Snidely Whiplash. What are you doing there? <laughs> Twiddling his his mustache and goatee. Oh goodness. Uh so uh, so Hank or no Scott. Scott goes into the uh, the eye of the the blown up eye of the TARDIS in this one. Yeah, and keeps on creating multiple versions of him, variants of what may or may not have yeah, happened. he is he is in a probability a probability loop. And uh, much like uh, uh, other incarnations of, of uh, Scott Lang we've seen, he runs into Doug and Donuts Scott. No, he lot. runs into Baskin Robbins. Baskin Scott. Robbins. There we Scott. go. <laughs> Delicious. Get yourself a uh, what is that thing called? A banana cake. royale. Oh, we forgot oh, that. Man, so good. Uh, yeah, I just remember that guy <laughs> made the cake at the end. He did. It was good. <laughs> so we'll good. get there. We'll get there. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, yeah, he's stuck in this probability loop, and then like a lot of the people like, like die and explode because they yeah. get it wrong or they blow up too fast. Yeah. And uh, then they eventually it was in the trailer. Yeah. Then eventually they find out that uh, that the daughter's life is on the line, so they yeah. all start to work like ants. Yeah. Because he he has 
cloned himself so many times that he can actually like turn into ants and yeah, use and ant- they somehow realize which Scott is the original Scott of this probability matrix. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I felt yeah. fancy saying that. I know. Ability I was matrix. thinking like there's even more like Dark Knight Rises reference. Yeah, I know. And it's now that I'm thinking about it. Bring him out of there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then uh, Hope is uh, able to get inside this uh, this eye of the Tardis as well. Yeah. And she has a bunch of clones of herself, but they end up saving each other, shrinking the thing back. Yeah. And Kang gets uh, his eye of the Tardis back. He's like, ha <laughs> And much like Bane, like, yeah, much like you exiled me. I will exile you, <laughs> right? I saw it. I was like, "Oh man!" I was like, "Hey, if it isn't broken, man, don't fix it." That I was will good. leave you here, much like you left me here all those years ago. Who uh, better could never? Yeah, <laughs> I think him to say that. So uh, we're good, yeah, bro. Hmm? I broke the bat. I broke the. <laughs> I broke the ant. Oh, uh, we'll save that for later. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> By the way, the count is in like a commercial for something. I, what? I forget. <laughs> he's back. Yeah, he's like walking down the street and stuff. It's kind of crazy. That's so weird. He walks. Yeah, he just cuts like legs. <laughs> <So> <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh, I think he was like, <laughs> look at the price of gas going up. <laughs> <laughs> One, <laughs> two, two, three, ten dollars. <laughs> oh yeah, it was for like uh, personal accounting or something. Oh goodness. Uh, <laughs> can't afford gas. Can't afford personal accounting. Come on, broccoli, fifteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Peasants. Is <laughs> <laughs> I'm a vampire. Don't take anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, what was I saying? Okay. Uh, so they escape, and then who who saves them is uh, is uh, Hank Pym. Yeah. He found the ants. Yes. And it turns out they have evolved into super ants. Yeah. They super they, biotechnical ants. They went into a what? What do you call it? He called it something ridiculously that I keep forgetting, but I will remember later. They went into their own little quantum realm. Yeah. And then b- b- millions of years have passed, and they finally been able to come and help. Yeah, um, so. like, we're smart. We've been looking for you. <laughs> and then uh, he gets all super, like you know, it was, I know communism. That time dilation. Time dilation. There we go. And he goes. I know communism is a charged word and all, but blah 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 blah. Like, he says, socialism was Social- a charged word. Socialism. Yeah. And then he's like, wait, but this a, <laughs> but the ants work. I just want to say they're ants. Yeah, ants. Insects. <laughs> and then, you know, they have a queen and stuff, and. You know, and all kind of things. Yeah. But anyway, right. uh, what was I gonna say? Okay, so then they they do the raid on yeah. um, on Kang's comp Kang's complex. <laughs> Kang's. Uh, Ant Man like it's really big. He starts like punching. A lot it. of alliteration here. Yeah, they keep trying to get into it. Uh, Conquered Kang <laughs> complex. Yeah, and, and, and a lot happens. They go after all these people. Yeah, there's a whole lot. There's a whole lot of things happening yeah, in the stuff, middle. Of all, yeah, stuff, things. Stuff, movie, stuff, movie, 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 movie. Movie's got a movie. <laughs> That's what I wrote on my description of this movie, thing. Movie, movie, movie. <laughs> <wrote it> <laughs> Rebellion. Rebellion. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Then the, the like re- the force. Look, use it. <laughs> yeah, and then the uh, the other avatars in this middle of nowhere, like they start like fighting. And uh, I don't know. Was this you or me? So Kang has like force powers like that's yeah, that's how he's able to like manipulate. Yes, he does. <laughs> he's like he's Darth a, Vader. He's like Darth Vader and a mutant at the same time. He's like you will help me and then like Kang's you know, like Kang and Lang is like <laughs> he's like he's a dog. I will hurt your daughter now. <laughs> it's like insert scene. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel in charge? <laughs> So it really is. That's yeah. the thing. That's why I said like, well, my wife actually told me she's like, it feels like I'm watching a Star Wars movie. Do you feel in charge? Um, so this guy uh, they, they managed to get the complex. Uh, yeah, Modoc. Oh, Modoc and uh, the daughter. What's her name? Cassie Lang. Modoc and Cassie get into it. Yeah, because because she's had a thing like she had this fear of him because he's like this is the guy who tried to kidnap you when I was six That's years old. Yellow jacket guy who messed up my train set. Yeah, <laughs> what a douche. <laughs> oh, what a dick. There you By go. the way, we'll get All to right, that. Yeah. We'll get to that. You got to yeah. stop being a dick. Yeah. <laughs> What's the name? Got to be stop being a dick. Cross. <laughs> Well, well, I don't know how to be anything else. Stop being a dick. <laughs> yeah. uh, don't be a dick. Don't be a dick. <laughs> PSA of the day. <laughs> so after they fight, he stops being a dick. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Kang like like decimates using his like force powers. Yeah. All these rebels and does all these things. Like he's just zapping them away. He <laughs> is straight up a. Oh yeah, he's, he's got, a Sith. Like, he's got these like guns that like like disintegrate people. Yeah. And he disintegrates poor like like a uh, cannon face guy. Yeah, cannon face guy, man. Oh, we missed broccoli guy. Oh yeah. Is that man a piece of broccoli? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's got like seventeen eyes. <laughs> yeah, so guys. Cool. Uh yeah. So so they're they're fighting all these guys. And uh, Kang, like, just as, just as he's about to win the day, yeah. the, the ants come. The ants. The ants come and yeah. 
And you know what this reminded me of? Remember Starro in um, I was gonna, Suicide Squad? I was just going to say, not even Suicide Squad. I was going to reference Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At the end, when like when they're about to get destroyed by all the, uh, what is it? All the orcs. All the orcs. The freaking, like the entire army of Middle Earth come oh. and swarm upon them. With Gandalf and his flashlight. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Gandalf and, the White. And Carl time. Urban. Yeah. <laughs> Back when he was only. Back before he was a scientist, yeah, you know, a yeah doctor, doctor Jim. He's a doctor, not a tool man. <laughs> not a, tool man. <laughs> a doctor, not a not a bricklayer. <laughs> um, but but uh, at the end of the Suicide Squad, all the rats killed Starro. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about it. Man, that was a long review ago. Two, yeah, I was like, that was our third or fourth was review. Me. I was like, wow, wow really? Yeah, one God, of, was one of the early long, ones. That was a long time ago. It's a good movie. Yeah, not like Black Crab. <laughs> I still have a review. I can't Black, believe that one happened. Black Crab starring Nomi Ripley's and Gosh. Ice Skaters. <laughs> I forgot that was Ice Skaters. Just when you thought the war was lost, a group of ice skaters go across the sea. <laughs> Just imagine Waterworld, but with ice. <laughs> Probably more timely now that like Russia's at war. Holy cow. Yeah, there you go. That's the enemy. To defeat the enemy, they have to ice skate. <laughs> I skate for not only their lives, but ours on speed skates on speed skates <laughs> because there's, there are no pirouettes on this class. You thought blades of glory was intense. We got black crab blades of fury. They're going to ice skate like crabs. What? <laughs> They're going to ice skate like crabs across oh, the open sea. <laughs> it's uh, we're not kidding. He uh, really? Nomi replaced was wrote rapids was cool when she when she was bathing with the lamb. Just you wait. Or she gave birth to an alien baby. Weird. <laughs> an alien baby. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, but anyway, it gets weirder. Black crab <laughs> review coming soon <laughs> to a theater near you. <laughs> yeah, reviewed this two will years be a, ago. <laughs> this will be a fathom events <laughs> release. Fathom events. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you missed it. <laughs> Take I, heard, soon. I heard the bells. <laughs> I heard the bells. <laughs> Only at the Met <laughs> in the Nutcracker and and Tchaikovsky Nutcracker in the middle of July. <laughs> the <laughs> Nutcracker. And we the we got the exclusive Clerks Five. The Clerkening. <laughs> the Clerkening. <laughs> <laughs> Promptly at eleven fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> Between matinees, eleven <laughs> fifteen <laughs> no more. When do they have time? <laughs> They, they, yeah. When I went to the movie theater to see this, it was Avatar playing and it was Quantum Mania playing. There was no time for anything else. Yeah, it was like Quantum Mania on every screen yeah. all the time. <laughs> like, there's no time for your 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 your, yeah. your, your invite. There no fathom events. <laughs> fathom event. It's on a Tuesday afternoon. They just bring their own like projector. Like, I think they oh, do. you're they not just, you're not wasting our pro- digital projector on this on side of the building. <laughs> Inside the lobby, they're like, "What's that person?" There's a group of people holding a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they brought their wine, <laughs> their wine and their blanket. And they sit in the aisles. They have charcuterie board. <laughs> charcuterie. <laughs> and probably the wine, cheese, and sausage. <laughs> <laughs> the best. Yeah. Shut up and take my money. Oh my god! <laughs> All right, so they get in this big battle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It was a lot of movie. It's a lot of movie. Uh, the ants uh, kind of win the day, and now Kang's like suits all messed up, and he's like, and then uh, they're able to re rebuild. Oh, uh, Hank, I uh, don't. No, Scott blows yeah. up the thing even more and destroys Die of the Tardis, and yeah. like it gets like bigger and smaller, and gets them. Like, he yeah. messes it up, something like that. And uh, the the ant family manages to escape back into the wormhole. Yeah, uh, Modok uh, starts fighting uh, Kang. Cassie. He, Oh yeah, it's just funny. Yeah, so he Kang, Kang it, puts up his own little force field. Yeah, and all this stuff, and you know everybody's trying to get to Kang. And by the way, I don't know if this was a like a dirty joke or whatever, but they they, they kept on telling us, uh, 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 Modok to not be a dick. Okay, and he dies spitting up white stuff. Oh, I didn't even catch that. Yeah, right. Ooh. <laughs> it was on his face and everything. That's gross. Yeah, right. Hey, whoever came up with that, no. Yeah, I don't know. Remove it. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> no thanks. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but he dies. Uh, it's trying quantum juice. Yeah, yeah. He tries trying not to be a dick by saving everybody a couple yeah. of times, and then he says like, he goes like, Scott, 
you were like a brother to me. <laughs> and now I'm going to. And then he touches his face. He touches his, his face baby with his baby hands. hands. And he goes, now I die an Avenger. Yeah. He's everyone like, it's like well, <laughs> what? Uh, no. sure. he's like, sure, buddy. Yeah. All right. Okay. Then he dies. <laughs> Thumbs up for you, buddy. I, I was waiting for his like thing because he, he had a heartbeat heartbeat meter. Yeah. Like, on I his saw chest. It. Yeah. I was waiting for it to keep going and then be like, Wait, is he dead? No, his thing's gone. That's what I was expecting too. And he like opened an eye, like no, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> like okay, are, you, like, are you really yeah. dying? He's like I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for that that gag, but uh, yeah. but he, but they did flatline eventually, so they yeah. didn't want him to do it. Which is kind of missed missed joke there, by the way. Yeah, that would have been funny. Uh, so uh, most of the ant family make it through the wormhole. Yeah, back and then Kang like gets up and starts beating him up. Beating up Ant Man, Ant Man, yeah, Scott Lang, Scott Lang, and he goes bane on this guy. Holy cow, man! You know, he you does bane? like this crazy heel kick oh, on yeah. his face. My God, oh yeah, my yeah. God! Throws a chair at him. You and know, then Scott Lang's stuff. like old face all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, like he, he's his face is all like burnt, and messed up from like the fight, and then like he's he's landing some blows. Yeah, <laughs> it remember, also remind me of where in, uh, the Punisher was fighting uh, Kingpin. In the uh, Daredevil show, remember he kept like he punched Kingpin in the face. He's, oh, he was just yeah. like he was just like, and then he just wailed on Punisher. <laughs> you <laughs> remember beat that? him up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was actually a pretty good fight. And then Hope came through the wormhole and started like beating him up again. And then then they threw him into the eye of the TARDIS, and then yeah. uh, he got sucked into it. Uh, much like Modok got sucked into the 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 thing uh, in the last one. That's you know, so it kind of looks uh, you know like poetry. It rhymes. <laughs> Uh, and then they both they all escaped back through the wormhole and all is right as rain. Let's see, I'm trying to see how old Jonathan Majors is. My guess he's like 33. Dude, you were right on. Yeah, why not? <laughs> well, that's the thing. <laughs> so because you're saying they're fighting, I was just like, oh, you know what? Let me see what their age difference is. It is 20 years. Scott Lang. Well, I don't know if he's that age in this movie, but he is 53 years old. That Paul Rudd. He is. Yeah. I was like, oh man, he's got old face and then punch in the old face. Good job, Jonathan Majors. You beat up a geriatric. <laughs> yeah, good job there, buddy. Douche. <laughs> and he still kicked your ass. Yeah. <laughs> his peeps still kicked your ass. You got a blow. How old is uh, Evangeli- what's Evangeline? Evangeline Lily? Evangeline Lily, who was also oh. in a Lord of the Rings movie, by the way. Oh, yeah. And you know, I've been rewatching those. Just she's forty three. Yeah, I was thinking she's okay. gotta be mid forties. So. Yeah. There you go. Um, but anyway, they, they all get sucked back in the into the real world and yeah. the, the wormhole closed behind them and all is right as rain. Yeah. And they celebrate a birthday at the end and <laughs> Baskin Robbins guy makes a cake for the first yeah. time and the boss from the original movie that hires Scott Lane. Yeah. He's like, I made you a cake. I've made a cake since nineteen ninety seven. He's like, really good. it was like really bad and then they're all good. Then uh, Scott Lang's like walking down the street and then playing the Welcome Back Carter theme. He's like, we did back. it. Welcome we saved back. the quantum realm. I don't know if all of everyone. It was like, like but, but what? What? What did? Did, did he Hank? die? Did yeah. he say that like more people were coming? Yeah. <laughs> did he say like something was happening? If we killed him, did was worse going to happen? Is that what he said? Yeah. Somehow killing King is like the worst thing and, you can do. And as we're hearing this, the sound is just going mm. dead. Just <laughs> we're getting that THX sound <laughs> <laughs> it just ends uh, he's like nah, nah I'm sure everything will be fine. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> it's so the song good. plays back up. We like stretch <laughs> like boogie nights down. That's the pretty good. Holding a cake. Yeah, and the movie ends pretty much. Yeah, uh, fast yeah. forward to a cut scene. Yeah, uh, mid credit sequence. Yeah, a, oh, seems like a space Roman Coliseum. And yeah, there's three like Kings. Hey, there's like Pharaoh King. There's like another there's, like there's tons of kings, but yeah. but there's like three or four of them talking like yeah, ma- the, like the major kings. We'll yeah, say. they're like the exile has like been destroyed. Oh, that's been confirmed. Yeah. Like well, we've called. Uh, we've it's called like which one of us killed him? It wasn't any of us. <gasps> it was them. It was them. And, and then they look at the so they're looking at because they have a door to the multiverse. They they're looking at it the way we look at the sky, and they're like, oh, if we let them kill him. Then what is to say they won't kill us next? <laughs> yeah, we, we we called a a council, a council. Like how many did you call? Like all of them. And then yeah. they cut to like, or the, say all of us. I think all of us. Yeah. And they cut to the Colosseum and just filled with kings. Yeah, and they're like, I don't know why it cut specifically to like a bushel of kings just laughing maniacally at each other. Yeah, that was weird. A lot of these, a lot of these kings didn't look menacing. They looked. 
It looked crazy. Just crazy. Just Joker crazy. Yeah. But not even like classy Joker crazy. They just look like like they're on drugs. Yeah. They all look like they were on drugs. They, they've messed up. But but <laughs> but definitely thousands and thousands of different kings. Yeah. Jonathan Major kings and all kinds of different outfits and yeah. all kinds of different styles. And they even say that the king that this guy was in was the He's always been a variant of uh, Mr. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Reed Richards, but I think it's his cousin or something. So, like, it's always been a variant of the. Fa- and it, they say the reason why he wears this green suit is because he's actually he actually stole the. Was suit. it from Doctor Doom or something? Doctor Doom suit. Okay. Yeah. So that's one of the nice. rumors that's kind of going around. Ooh, so maybe even Doctor maybe even Doctor Doom is the only one who can save everybody. Yeah, and 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 the thing is, I think right after that it says. Well, we have one more cut scene mm-hmm. that we just, you know, I didn't get to see, but you got to see. So, yeah, it looks like it takes place in like the early 1900s, late 1800s. Yeah. And another king who looks like, uh, you know, 1800s, he is like yeah. unveiling like a time machine or something. He's yeah. like, I will show you the time machine, right? And he's, he's showing it at like some convention, like, you know, like the start conventions. Where yeah, like he shows like the World's tech, Fair, the World's Fair convention. And then they cut to Loki and Morbius E. Mobius. Yeah. Uh, so Tom Hiddleston and Owen Wilson in return. Like, that's him. That's the man. It's like, oh, no, we have to stop him. And like, yeah. that's how it ends. Scene ends. King will return. Then movie ends. So Woo. It was good. It was, man. Uh, and like we were saying, there. And we didn't even cover everything. Like there was a lot of movie in this thing. There's like a lot of strife, a lot of infighting. There's like, yeah, you know, there's a hero's journey going on. It happens really fast. uh, And I'm glad that that Scott Lang didn't die. Yeah, that was. And that's the thing. That was like the whole thing. The the entire time this movie was rumored to be releasing every single site that you could point a stick at was like, he's dead. He's going to the ant man dies. Mm hmm. Which I don't think would have bought them a whole lot more gravitas. Yeah. I, I think I think Ant Man at the end with the epilogue, basically saying like, <clears throat> "Yeah, did we beat him? Yeah, sure we did. Yeah, F- it. Yeah. You know, it's all good." So Ant Man. Yeah. So yeah, I think that was a better ending and more in line with Ant Man because like, what's he gonna do? Like, go back and check? Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm not going back there. Wait, no. Woof. It's not what happened the first time. <laughs> yeah. Just like, where's that? Yes. <laughs> Uh, but it was a lot of fun, yeah. and I say see it. I'm actually going to say it. Uh, I'm going to give it a B. Quantum Mania is a maniacally fun, but it's also a sci-fi epic that seems half-baked at times, but it's still a lot of fun. This movie is better than a lot of recent Marvel offerings. The strongest point is the bond between Scott Lang and the rest of the Ant-Man family. Nice, man. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it one up. Mm. I'm going to give this one a B plus, which is it's a downgrade from my original grade, but just a little bit, not by much. So this movie actually felt like a summer flick. Like it felt like I was watching a movie in summer. And I was totally disappointed when I walked out and I was freezing cold because it's winter. Um, it was it's it's a true, real winter. Yeah, we're in Southern California. We're actually getting cold air yeah. and rain and hail. It's weird. <laughs> um, so I said it was a true hero's journey as we see a hero go from this lax to downright filled with loathing and then back again. We see Scott go through these uh, these transitions from like I love people to I'm going to murder this one guy specifically, which we have not encountered in any of the other Ant-Man movies. So we get to see this range of his character. There was so much going on and all of it just made for a good time. It was just a fun time to watch this movie. I can't recall the last Marvel movie. I actually enjoyed getting lost in for the first time in a while watching a Marvel movie. I was at the movies. Yeah. And, uh, I think the last time maybe I really liked a movie like this was watching Thor, uh, Thor, not Love and Thunder, the one before it, uh, Dark World. N- no, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, what was the next Thor? I forget those four Thors. Ragnarok, Thor, Ragnarok, blah 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 blah, yeah. Ooh, blah, blah, blah. Thor, Ragnarok. Yeah. At- had a lot of good stuff at the Thor planet. That was that was a fun movie to watch. But it had a weird villain. It had a weird. Yeah. Uh, what's her name? Uh, why is my brain not working? Was it, what do you think this voodoo soldier, voodoo know. ranger stuff? Uh, Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett. Kate yeah. Blanchett was not a very good villain. No, she's King yeah. uh, Jonathan Majors. I used to say, <laughs> I said Lee Majors. He played like the six million dollar man. <laughs> 
Uh, Jonathan Majors uh, is a good king, but I think we could have gotten a little bit better. Actor, hey, we maybe. have variants. We could see other variants of different faces. I know they played a lot of them with Majors' face on them. Yeah. But hey, you never know. There might be another variant. Yeah, but, but I mean, I liked it. it was I a, did too. It was good, and a lot of people say, oh, we shouldn't have Kang in this movie. Well, who else would you get? Yeah. Would Bill Murray been the bad guy throughout the whole movie? No. No, I, no he's old. He's, I, he I like it. make I, it. I like this how it... I get the logistics here. How it uh, feathered in with uh, Loki, which yeah. means once you kill him, it gets it's like a Hydra, like another one grows. Exactly. Or two more grow so or something. De- like if you want to do yourself a favor, watch like the last couple episodes of Loki. Yeah. Before it re- you watch this. Because it, it definitely spins off as to what's happening here. And as we kind of alluded to at the beginning of this review, like yeah. it looks like a lot of the tech he's using looks like the Shang-Chi yeah. Ten Rings. Yeah. Uh, and I think, what is it? So the way, I guess the way it all goes is you watch Ant-Man 2, you watch um, Endgame. Obviously, you can watch both of them, but just watch Endgame. You can watch Endgame, then you watch Shang-Chi. If you want to, She-Hulk, don't do it. No. Um, She-Hulk is part of this this king? Universe? Yeah, it goes into it. Yeah, mm, okay. because Shang-Chi ties in all this stuff. You go in there, and then you can, you know, jump into Loki at the last few episodes, and then watch this. And you'll get like this. You'll get your head wrapped around what's happening in terms of like the multiverse. I was also thinking, um, uh, you know, the Ten Rings. Yeah. Uh, we first meet the Ten Rings in the very first Iron Man, in the very beginning. Yes, we do. And then they had a uh, a DVD extra, which was called Hail to the King, which was uh, Trevor. I saw that. My name is it's, Trevor. Those are on Disney Plus. Yeah, uh, Hail to the King, Trevor. He was in jail, and he was like, "You'll never see me coming." Oh, he did the thing. Yeah, I he know did he did, did it. Thing. I was like, "What?" He did the thing, and he gets captured by someone actually from the Ten Rings, which we find out actually is part part of the Shang Chi's operation. Yeah, in the movie. Well, uh, if the only other mention of the Ten Rings, other than Shang Chi, mm-hmm. which it was the the main villain, was Ant Man One, where Corey Stoll, the character Cross, was selling. Microtech, yeah, to a member of the Ten Rings. Yes, so maybe he was trying to get back to King or trying to get more something King tech. Yeah, so maybe that's part of uh, the full circle. Yeah, so what, what we're saying is just watch Ant Man Quantum Media. Yeah, it's watch fun. It. Don't listen to all these other reviewers saying all this wishy washy stuff. Go watch it. Get some popcorn. Yeah, and if you're if you're hopefully watching this sometime when it's in theaters, don't see Knock at the Cabin. No, see God, this please instead. Don't. See this don't. instead. And I think you probably have. So good, yeah. good job. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. So there you go. All right. Well, anyway, remember to like, share, subscribe, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, wherever we are, sometimes on YouTube. Who yeah. knows? <laughs> Depending on the situation. And watch out for Penny. She's crazy. But she is around. Yeah. I'm your host, Mark Wilcobo, joined once again by Mr. A.O. Panetta for Clubhouse Movies Podcast. We'll catch you next time. Thanks, Spider-Man. I baked you a cake.